Hi, I'm Steven. You can now watch UCF TV 24 hours a day on Bright House Digital Channel 1. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, from the Emerald Isle to the City Beautiful, we introduce you to golfer Simon Ward. And women's basketball is ready for the Conference USA Tournament. We check in with Coach Joy Williams. All that and more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life. Hello and welcome once again to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. This week was one of the busiest weeks all year for UCF Sports as the winter and spring sports both converged on campus. What better way to start the week then with golf as the men's team hit the links down at Rio Pinar Golf and Country Club for their home tournament this season and a good tournament it was for them. Let's take a look at what happened. It was a windy day at Rio Pinar Golf Club, but that did not phase the Knights one bit. Blaine Barber shot a 64 in the second round on Monday and followed that up with a 69 on Tuesday. He finished 12 under par, good enough for him to win the individual title by two strokes. It's the freshman's first title of his career. As a team, the Knights were 13 under par. That was good enough to give them their second straight Rio Pinar title and third in the last five years. Afterwards, the freshman champion spoke about his first college victory. Uh, it feels really good. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work and um, I definitely wanted to achieve that. And it's great to uh, finally do that. Another busy week for the softball team. Their first of seven games during the week was Tuesday against Centenary. Tied at two in the sixth inning, Megan Paul, the senior, comes through with this base hit, knocking in a pair of runs. Then Tiffany Lay came to play, and she gets a hold of this one deep and gone over the center field wall. A three-run shot, and the Knights take a 7-3 victory over Centenary. The following day, the Knights started a double header against Bethune Cookman, a nip and tuck affair throughout, but Abby McLean had the big blow. Here she blasts a solo shot to left field, and that was all Megan Paul would need. She got solid defensive help and route to a two to nothing victory. Then the Knights faced Eastern Michigan in the nightcap. UCF was down four to two, heading into the bottom of the fifth. But the bats dug UCF out of the hole. Hillary Barrel doubled home Brianne Javier to cut the lead. And then Vanessa Perez, the freshman, comes through with an RBI single to tie the game. Lindsey Dean then gave UCF the lead with this base hit, scoring Perez. And Ashley Cole slammed the door to give UCF a 5-4 win. Men's basketball faced a very tough Rice team at UCF Arena, and this was Jermaine Taylor's night. He throws down a new career high, 45 points, the fourth highest total in school history, and the most since UCF moved to Division I. Even so, the Knights still trailed by as much as 20 late in the game, but JT led a furious late rally. However, despite climbing to within one point in the final minute, the Owls held on for the win 69 to 66. Women's tennis needed no such rally to tame the Eagles of Eastern Michigan at the tennis complex. Alexis Rodriguez and the Knights didn't even surrender a single set in the entire match and route to the seven nothing sweep. Women's basketball returned home for its final two games at the arena this season. The first was against Memphis and the Knights used an 18 nothing run to vault to a huge lead led by Emma Cannon who hit six straight points during the run and route to another double double 21 points and 15 rebounds. And the Knights, who led by as much as 27, stopped the Tigers 82 to 67. Back to the softball complex, the Knights faced the Orange of Syracuse in the first of a doubleheader on day one of the UCF Invitational. The Knights fell down 3 0, but Abby McLean's home run in the sixth inning cut the lead to two. But it would not be enough if the Orange took the 3 2 victory. Later on, UCF would take out their frustrations on Tennessee State to the tune of nine runs on 11 hits and route to a 9-7 victory, gaining a split for the day. 
Next day at the tennis complex, the men's tennis team faced a tough test against the 37th ranked USF Bulls. Blaze Schwartz scored a huge victory in singles in three sets, but it would be the Knights' only point on the day as they fall to USF. More softball at the complex as Florida A&M came to town, but Tiffany Lane continued her power surge. She hit this two-run blast in the third, helping Christina DeMello score a 7-0 victory. Then against Maine, the bats were lively once again. One on in the third, and Brianne Javier gets a hold of this one here. A deep drive to right for a two-run shot. That would be more than enough for starter Ashley Cole, who struck out seven and also rode a solid defensive effort to a 5-0 shutout victory. And the Knights get the clean sweep on Saturday night, not allowing a single run. On the road again, the men's basketball team took on Marshall up in Huntington. And another solid game for Jermaine Taylor, though not quite the same as his career effort a few nights before. Still, JT racked up 28, keeping the Knights in it. But Marshall hung tough in this close affair and withstood Taylor's last second three-point attempt to get the win. Final score 67 to 62. The Knights have one more week before the Conference USA Tournament. Back at home, the women's basketball team looked to complete an undefeated home conference season as they faced UAB. And it was the Chelsea Wiley and Emma Cannon show. Chelsea racked up 31, and Cannon poured in 21 and picked up 13 rebounds as the Knights kept the Blazers at bay the whole afternoon. Final score 74 to 59. The Knights get the victory and go undefeated at home in conference play. 8 and 0 and finish in a four-way tie for second in the league in the regular season. Baseball faced a tough three-game set in Baton Rouge against the number one team in the nation, the LSU Tigers. Nico Vasquez had the highlight for UCF as he homered twice in the series opener. Still, it was not enough as UCF learned firsthand how good the Tigers really are. The black and gold gets swept by the top-ranked Bayou Bengals, 13-4, 11-2, and 16-0. Over in Houston, the track and field team posted its best finish ever in the Conference USA Indoor Championships. UCF came in third in the overall team competition. Two Knights took home individual titles. Deion Thomas won the triple jump on day one with a winning effort of 41 feet 7 inches, an NCAA qualifying mark. Also, Sheila Paul won the 60-meter dash with a time of 7.44 seconds. Overall, it was the Knights' best ever effort in the conference indoor championship since joining CUSA. And of course, for more information on all UCF sports, all you got to do is visit ucfathletics.com, your home for UCF sports 24-7, 365. Don't go away. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, he's brought his golf game with him to Orlando all the way from back home in Ireland. We'll introduce you to Simon Warren when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans, join the men's basketball team for senior night against East Carolina as the UCF faithful bid farewell to Kenrick Zondervan and Jermaine Taylor. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. on Saturday night. For more information, call 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. The tiny nation of Ireland has a wonderful tradition in the sport of golf, from Hugh Boyle to Peter Lorre to three-time major winner Patty Harrington. Simon Ward is trying to add his name to that illustrious list, and he's working on it right here at UCF. The resident of County Monaghan is off to a great start this year, and we get a closer look at him in our Sports Night Spotlight. Hey, my name is Simon Ward. I'm from County Monaghan, Ireland. I got into golf when I was about 13 or so, 12, 13. I played a lot of soccer, a lot of Irish football, and then I didn't really get serious until I was about 15. But it was kind of my parents kind of just wanted me to experience a lot of sports, and uh, I just chose golf. Everyone starts very young. I think usually it's about five or six people grow up with a golf club in their hand, but um, I was a bit later than everybody else. But it worked out alright. I'm on the Irish teams. So we play, we play a lot around Europe and around the world, actually. Well, it's kind of a, a long story, I guess. I always kind of knew who Simon Ward does. We do a lot of our international recruiting via online. 
I played for a university called University of Ulster. Um, I played two years there. And uh, I wasn't sure if he was going to go to the States and go to college. And uh, I called him and emailed him, and it kind of everything went from there. Well, firstly, at a university level, there's a lot more competition. There's a lot more, obviously, there's a lot more of the best players, coll collegiate players in the world all come together in America. And we play a lot of tournaments. Um, over here at home, we only play two or three events. Uh, the courses are the courses here for college golf is pretty amazing. We play a pretty good schedule, so that's the main difference. Yeah, kind of miss home. Obviously, I miss family and friends at home. But I'm used to traveling. I've been traveling around the world for the last four or five years, so it's not like I'm. It's, it's like second nature, really, being away from home. Yeah, so far at the start, it was a big adjustment because uh, um, I used to hit the ball very low. Um, now I have to learn to hit a little bit higher. Um, I have to get used to the heat. That's a big difference to at home. Um, I'm just really getting used to the whole American culture. Everything's just totally different. So, because I'm driving on the wrong, different side of the road <laughs> is one difference. But uh, so far, I am adjusting pretty good. Even though he's older and more mature than, than most freshmen are, but it's still a little bit of a learning curve when you get into college and, and getting adjusted to everything. I think it's the hardest part was getting adjusted to the heat in August. Um, that'd be the most difficult thing. And, but he's done great. I mean, he's lost in the playoff with the Gator, and you know, he played, his, his, his B game is better than most people's A game. I'm happy being here, learning, learning golf, learning studies, and so far it's going well. All right, don't you dare go away. When we get back, we'll sit down with head coach Joy Williams and talk about her women's basketball team as they get ready for the Conference USA Tournament. That and plenty more when we return. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. What a job the women's basketball team has done so far this season. They finish 8-0 at home in the conference. And joining me now is head coach Joy Williams in preparation for the Conference USA Tournament. Coach, how are you? Thanks. I'm, I'm fine, Jeff. Thank you. Tell me, a year ago, if uh, I told you that uh, you would finish this season undefeated in conference at home, uh, what would you have told me? Um, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> um, you know. it's exciting for us, but we are... Uh, we feel very good about what we've done, and, and we have felt like we could do this. You know, it would it be the second year or third year? Uh, we didn't know that because you know it takes time to build, but we're happy about where we are and, um, you know, know that we still have a lot of room for improvement, but we're excited. How, uh, how important was it to finish strong in these last two games at home? Very important. You know, we, we lost some momentum when we went on the road. We went one and three on that swing, and um, for us to come back home and, and have some success was going to be very crucial, I think, especially for our young basketball team in their minds to gain confidence and some momentum going into uh, New Orleans this week. From that young basketball team, who do you think has been the biggest key so far to this to this remarkable conference run? Well, I don't think it's one person. We're not good enough for it to be one person. It's several people. Um, you know, Asia, Patrick, Chelsea, Wiley, and Emma have been huge for us and very consistent all year. Um, these last couple of games, we had some big contributions from our bench: Marche White, Denae Daniels, Asia Kelly, Jaleesa Caldwell. So it's been seriously been a team effort. I know that's kind of cliche at times, but um, you know, the big three: Cannon, Wiley, and, and Patrick have been very good. Um, for a lot of our games. Absolutely. It's a large cast that's been critical to it. So now you head up to New Orleans for the conference tournament. Uh, you play in the 5-12 game starting off uh, against Rice. What's the scouting report going into the tournament for you? Well, Rice is a team that, uh, you know, we played here and, and, and uh, were able to play on our home court and, and had a very good win against them. They're going to be a little bit different. They have a, a point guard who didn't play against us. Uh, she, she was not there due to injury, and she's healthy now. So um, she's tough to stop, very good penetrator. Um, they have some kids who can really shoot the ball. So it's going to be tough, tough defense. And, and we've got to understand that that game back in January has nothing to do with what's coming up on Thursday. So hopefully we're mature enough to, 
to uh, look at Rice as a completely different team. Any chance we can't petition the conference to host the tournament again this year at well, the late moment? That, that's a Keith Tribble question. So. <laughs> Head coach Joy Williams, congratulations on the excellent regular season, especially in conference play. Best of luck up in New Orleans. We'll see you again. Thank you. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, you've waited a whole month for it and it's finally back. It's our Sports Night highlight. We'll take a look at the plays of the month and plenty more when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans join the men's basketball team for senior night against East Carolina as the UCF faithful bid farewell to Kenrick Zondervan and Jermaine Taylor. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. on Saturday night. For more information, call 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. This is my UCF. Welcome back. Now, of course, you may have noticed that our Sports Night highlight has been pushed back a week because the month of February is so short. We've moved it to the first week in March. So you shall wait no longer. Special thanks to our good friends at WJRR 1011 and Axis Magazine. Strap yourself in and pump up the volume. It's our Sports Night highlight.
take a look at the week ahead. And again, it all starts on Wednesday with softball. The Knights welcome Loyola of Chicago to the softball complex. First pitch is at 3, and the game is live on UCFAthletics.com. Baseball, meanwhile, is on the road down in Miami. They face Florida International at 6 p.m. And also, men's basketball is in Tulsa to face the Golden Hurricane. Tip is at 8, and you can watch online or listen on 740 The Game. Women's basketball heads up to New Orleans this week for the Conference USA Championship at Fogelman Arena on the campus of Tulane University. The tournament goes Thursday through Sunday, and you can listen to the night's action on UCFAthletics.com. The semifinals of the tournament will be televised on CBS College Sports, and the championship is on ESPN2. Friday has a double dip of tennis action. The men's team begins things at home. They face FAU bright and early at 11.30 a.m. Then the women's team takes to the court to face Duke. That match gets underway at 4 p.m. Also on Friday, baseball is back home for the start of a three-game set with the Monmouth Hawks. First pitch is at 6.30 on Friday, followed by 4 p.m. on Saturday and 1 p.m. on Sunday. Softball starts conference play on Saturday. They head out to Tulsa for the weekend. They've got a doubleheader starting at 2 with the Golden Hurricanes, and then they wrap up the series on Sunday at 1 p.m. Back at home, it's senior night for men's basketball as Jermaine Taylor and Kenrick Zondervan play their final game in UCF Arena. Tip-off against the Pirates of East Carolina is set for 7 p.m., but get there early for the senior ceremony. Also Saturday, rowing takes part in the Metro Cup against their old foes from Rollins College. Sunday is also a busy day. The men's tennis team takes on Georgia State at 10 a.m. at the tennis complex. Women's golf hits the links as well. They kick off the UCF Challenge at Red Tail Golf Club in Sorrento, Florida. The tournament goes Sunday through Tuesday. Monday at 6 p.m., catch the Kirk Spiraw Radio Show, live from Smoky Bones in Waterford Lakes on AM 740, The Game. Then on Tuesday, join Coach Spira and Mark Daniels for UCF Sports Today with Kirk Spira as they look ahead to the conference tournament. The show debuts at 4 on Sun Sports and also airs Wednesday and Friday on Bright House Sports Network as well as all week on UCF TV. And of course, you can always catch UCF Sports Night Tuesdays at 3.30 on Sun Sports and also Tuesdays and Thursdays on Bright House and all week on UCF TV. Check your local listings. And as always, if you want to catch this episode one more time or see any of our archived episodes of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us for this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Centex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics.